<laughs> Twice a month is good. Supervisors, please take your seats. Give them a minute. They stood up too. You join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag. All right, good evening. Roll call of supervisors, please. I am aware that Supervisor Clark is uh, iffy on whether he'll attend, so if not, he's excused. I'm not aware of Supervisor Grulich's uh, absence, but clearly he is not with us this evening as well. Two more. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and the obvious right in front of me, Supervisor Arrington apparently is not here. So that's uh, 25 in attendance. At this point, I'm going to ask Mr. Osby, who I have not seen in a while, to come forward if he would.
All right, first thing I'm going to do next week is shorten up those proclamations. Awful lot to read. Uh, let's see. Citizen comments. At this point, uh, citizen comments are welcome here to the board. We, you'll uh, be allowed five minutes to address the board. Any issue, please approach the microphone, state your name and address, and uh, speak loudly and clearly if you would. Anyone wishing to address the board? Hi, Angela Hale, the Climax Bar. Okay, I'm um, doing a motion for the cabaret to go back to the Judiciary and Law Committee. I've been working with the Sheriff's Department and also with the Planning and Development. And I've also talked to someone who owns property, commercial property, directly across from um, the club, I mean, from the bar. And um, he's got cement and everything, sort of building and planning. Um, ben that I talked to, he had no problem with um, if the guy, he's willing to allow me to have parking there. His name is John, he's the owner of the cycle and lease. And I also, you know, informed the sheriff that I could have valet parking. There's, you know, people need jobs and I'm willing to do whatever I need to do to make um, the place um, safe for the bar and for the patrons. And they didn't seem to have a problem with it, but I will have everything in writing. So I'm working with an attorney also. And I'm just asking to have it sent back to Judiciary and Law Committee with my um, proposition, try to get my cabaret license. And that's it. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else wishing to address the board? Any other citizen comments? Seeing no one else approaching the microphone, citizen comments are closed. Announcements of the chairman. I have uh, just a couple you should all have on your desk, I believe. Uh, a red ribbon. This is the uh, Kenosha County Red Ribbon Campaign, October 14th through the 21st is Red Ribbon Week. And there's uh, also a list of uh, events that will take place throughout the week. You should also have on your desk the uh, bills over 5,000 that have been uh, approved and paid through the Finance Committee for your review. If you've got any questions, I would trust you can address those with uh, either Mr. Gertzen or Supervisor Clark. Um, we are currently scheduled to hear the budget on October, I'm sorry, public reading of the budget, uh, public comment on the budget on Wednesday, uh, Tuesday, November 8th, with adoption of the budget of Wednesday, November 9th. I'm going to move that to Monday for the public hearing, the 7th, with the vote on the budget on the 8th. Tuesday the 8th. So you can, uh, at this point in time, plan on that. I will confirm it and get something out uh, uh, confirming those dates. <clears throat> but that will be a, uh, more than likely the change that will be initiated. Also, I received an email today, and thank you to uh, Ms. Tunkies, who gave me a hard copy this afternoon or this evening when I got in here. City of Kenosha, they've got a media notice that was sent out today. Uh, Thursday, October 20th, this week Thursday, 1.30 to 2.30 at the Civil War Museum uh, in the Freedom Hall room, I believe. There's going to be a uh, press conference on the former Chrysler Fiat plant and the future of that property. So I believe we were all copied. If you haven't seen it, check your email. It should be there. That's all I have. Supervisor reports. Supervisor Michael. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the Judiciary and Law Committee met on October 5th. We discussed the uh, budget re relating to the circuit court, uh, juvenile intake, the district attorney's office, and also the uh, sheriff's department. Um, the circuit court, juvenile intake, and district attorney, um, the committee did uh, pass their, th that budget relating to those, um, <coughs> excuse me, relating to those uh, departments. Um, we also discussed the uh, Climax Tavern resolution, um, which is resolution number 62. And we also discussed uh, resolution number 64 relating to the, um, the ban on fire, excuse me, the ban of firearms in county buildings. Um, Judge Schrader was also there discussing the, uh, that uh, resolution. Um, Judiciary and Law did meet again on October 17th. 
Um, one of the big things that we did discuss is the um, mobile command center. You've all probably heard from the Kenosha News. Um, this is a request that was made by the uh, sheriff, and uh, the committee requested that uh, the mobile command center um, be brought to um, outside of the building so that uh, several of the committee and also other supervisors could examine the mobile command center. Um, sheriff Beth also had Walworth County bring theirs, and uh, there was another um, another um, mobile command center that was brought by a, a vendor um, so that um, the committee and also other supervisors could uh, examine and uh, and uh, look at and we did discuss um, that resolution um, there was additional information that has been requested by the committee one is how much it would cost to revamp um, the existing mobile command center how bad of shape it's actually in um, so that should be taken up at the next committee meeting. Um, we did follow up with actually passing uh, the sheriff's um, budget and the, at the October 17th. Um, so there's a lot going on. Um, I'd urge if anyone is um, concerned or has would would like to have um, input regarding the mobile command center um, to either contact me or members of the Com Judiciary and Law Committee or show up at the next uh, meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Vice Chairman Eckernis. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. On uh, Monday morning, the summary judgment hearing was held before Judge Schrader. He listened to argument from uh, uh, Frank and the uh, city's attorney for about two hours. He denied a motion in limine to toss the thing out entirely, but uh, he reserved judgment on the summary judgment and said he'll rule on that somewhere between now and the trial date, which is going to be the 26th of October. And uh, he said the bias is for denying the city's motion, but he wants to do more studying on it. This, this is on redistricting, by the way. This right? is on redistricting. This morning, uh, uh, our, one of our technicians, Greg, was uh, deposed by the city's attorney. This afternoon, I spent two hours uh, answering her questions. And uh, Friday morning, Al Brockmeyer have his opportunity. Uh, the city may uh, produce a revised map tomorrow morning for our consideration. If they do, we've scheduled a uh, redistricting committee meeting for 1 o'clock uh, on the second floor uh, on Thursday so we can consider uh, that map if one is forthcoming. Uh, we're scheduled for trial a week from tomorrow at, I believe, 9 o'clock. Yeah. So that's it. Thank you. Any other supervisor comments? Seeing no other reports, clerk. County executive appointments, 12. Dr. R. Scott Pierce to serve on the Kenosha County Workforce Development Board. For the Human Services Committee. 13. Benjamin R. Harbach to serve on the Kenosha County Board of Administrative Appeals referred to uh, Planning Development and Extension Education Committee. 14, Sandra Obasiglia to serve on the Kenosha County Board of Administrative Appeals. Also refer to Planning Development and uh, Extension Education Committee. New business resolutions, one reading, 62 from Judiciary and Law Committee regarding Climax Tavern Cabaret license request. Michael, yes. Haas, yes. Johnson, yes. Zinger, yes. Ron Frederick, yes. Gerlich, yes. Zerban, yes. Supervisor Michael. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move resolution number 62. Resolution 62 moved by Michael, seconded by Supervisor Haas. Supervisor Michael. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this resolution basically cleans up the, uh, the former resolution that was brought in front of this uh, county board. Um, basically, this resolution informs that the uh, Climax Tavern is not in conformity with the ordinance for cabaret license. Specifically, it does not have adequate parking. I'd urge your support on this. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone on the issue? Supervisor Rose. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have an inquiry of the Corporation Council as an, on procedure. Uh, it was my understanding, and I ask you your opinion as to whether this is correct or incorrect, that if a resolution did not pass a committee, that it was not then re brought back to the county board because it did not get a favorable recommendation. Uh, 
unless a particular supervisor had the resolution on the agenda uh, and then that particular supervisor would be advocating that proposition as opposed to the committee being in the endorsee of the resolution. I, I invite your comment on that because I've had that experience myself in submitting a resolution to a committee, it not being supported, but having the option of then returning it to the board with an unfavorable recommendation, but still being able to advocate that proposition. And if that be the case, and I thought that was the, the rule with respect to resolutions, uh, then I'd like to have some clarification on that point so that we're clear on procedure in the future. Uh, I can only address the uh, uh, subject that is currently before the board, which is the cabaret license. I believe that that requires a county board uh, action. Uh, there have been uh, other types of resolutions, for example, finance or budget resolutions, which uh, are to be reported back to the board, even if they are a, a negative recommendation. Uh, the reason for that was the uh, board many years ago felt that, uh, in effect, a, a majority of the finance committee, three people, should not have the final say on some budgetary matters. I believe that's still in the uh, rules. With respect to other uh, types of resolutions, if there is um, no uh, specific uh, ordinance requirement or prior policy requirement, such as may pertain, uh, for example, like with the cabaret license itself, I believe that resolutions can be believe that the rule is that you have to report back to the board if there's been a referral by the board, if it's a negative referral. Uh, if it was not referred by the board but was simply taken up uh, in committee uh, as a matter of first impression, uh, there are resolutions which can be killed in committee. It just doesn't never reaches the board because there's no uh, majority those are the only circumstances that I can think of. I don't know if that answers your question, but I think it does. So just procedurally in the future, if a supervisor has a resolution for the board's consideration and it doesn't receive the favorable endorsement of the appropriate committee, it's still a, placed on the agenda and the board votes it up or down? Uh, any supervisor can put a resolution on the board agenda. If it's gone to committee, been rejected by the committee, it can be reintroduced, I believe, by that supervisor. Well, I guess I'm, I'm still unclear as to why this is then on the agenda if there's no proponent. I, I don't have it in front of me, but I believe the cabaret license ordinance requires some board action. I mean, that's by state statute or in our rules? By the local ordinance that it does say that it must be returned for either unfavorable, even if the committee does an endorsement. I, I, I had experience not on a, on a liquor li or on a cabaret license, but on other issues, and uh, I just want to make, make sure we're consistent on it. The explanation that Corp Council gave last week, Supervisor Rose, our last meeting was exactly what he's stating today, right. which is that it requires county board action either in the affirmative or in the negative, which is why he directed the committee to go back and bring forward a resolution that in fact was affirmative to the committee's position, in this case a denial. All right, thank you. Supervisor Grady. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Then through the Chair to Corporation Council, if this type of cabaret license is kind of an exception procedurally to the other situations that Supervisor Rose mentioned, what else falls into this category procedurally besides cabaret license? Um, my recollection specifically is financial uh, budget changes um, and, and budgetary items. I would have to go back and check on zoning 
to see if that requires board action. If I, that, that's a very general question, Supervisor. I, you know, I'd have to go through the whole ordinance book at least. And no, I understand what you're saying. The question just being is, this is not one particular exception. You're saying there's a whole list then of things that would fall in the same category as this cable well, license. I, I know for sure finance. I don't believe that that rule has been changed. Uh, I remember when that rule was enacted and that was, gosh, that's got to be 20, 30 years ago, uh, maybe longer. Um, and we've always said that supervisors can bring their own own resolution um, sometimes when they've done that it's been referred to and maybe this is what supervisor is Rose is talking about he's brought a resolution it got referred to committee and the committee it died in committee is that what you're talking about supervisor Rose Sorry, I didn't hear what you said. Uh, a situation in which a um, supervisor brings a resolution on his own to the board. yes it's placed on the agenda Correct. gets referred to a committee. The committee then uh, takes no action on it. Or takes unfavorable action on or it. Or takes unfavorable action on it. Uh, it. Because it got referred by the board to the committee, the committee uh, has to at least report back in the form of a report. It could be in supervisor reports that they met and they decided not to act on it. That's my recollection. That has been the situation, and that's what I'm referring to. And of course, uh, that supervisor could then propose it anyway, and that's a that's a decision you make. But why is this being handled differently? Why isn't this to report that it's unfavorable? Uh, if somebody wants to advocate it, they can say, "I move uh, resolution 62." Why is this different than the situations that I'm very familiar with? This originally did not start with the board; it started on a petition by an individual citizen to have a license. The only reason I got referred back last time was because what they had proposed did not have the correct wording, and so I went back for cleanup. Supervisor Grady, anything else? That takes care of my question for the time being, but I think I would like for future reference purposes and for the benefit of county supervisors as well, the specific cases that this applies. So if Corporation Council could provide that at a future date, that would be appreciated. That's my comment. Thank you. Supervisor Grady, I'll make a note here um, to bring that up at the next executive committee meeting with the uh, Corporation Council's office. I, I know Frank is under a great deal of uh, pressure as of late, it would appear, with all he's got going on in court lately. So, But I will make sure that we address it. Supervisor Jeff Gintz. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, through the chair to the uh, Corp Council. It, uh, what is the time frame where is, if something is denied in this case that somebody could bring a request back? I mean, I, the individual is here saying that she has been working on a parking situation. It was denied because of a parking situation. It, and I'm not, I wasn't at the meeting, so I'll su support the committee here, but does she have a chance to bring this back after six months or something after the parking situation is resolved? I. Again, I, I don't recall any time frame for bringing anything back and absent anything in the ordinance. If the situation were corrected, uh, could, she could certainly apply for uh, another uh, license at a later date. Okay. Thank you. Supervisor Rose. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I think it's important here tonight to have an understanding why in the first time this came before the board, there was a recommendation for approval by the Sheriff's Department and an endorsement to the committee and then, then a, now a reversal. Uh, I don't have any problem endorsing the committee's decision, but I'd certainly like to know why in the first instance it would seem to be okay and now it's not. I, I understand what they've said in the reports here today, which tend to be uh, opposite of what occurred before, and I, I want to be able to defend this committee's uh, decision uh, and if the board endorses it uh, have an understanding why the about face 
Where was the mistake on the part of the sheriff's recommendation in the first instance? Supervisor Michael. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Briefly, I believe the um, when the uh, deputy went out to uh, view the parking area, there was not stripes in the area, and basically there was some misunderstanding regarding the amount of spots that were that was in the area, and also, I believe the the adjoining property where the actual parking lot was. I believe that was the confusion, and that was brought to um, our attention that there was a there was a. a basically a misunderstanding with the amount of parking spots that was for the facility. So to, to be clear, <clears throat> the misunderstanding is that the inspecting uh, deputy from the Sheriff's Department assumed a number of parking spaces that was more than what they can actually fit on the property, is that That's correct? correct. All right, so the, the actual number that- Because under the ordinance, the facility has to have actually marked spots this was a, a just a blacktop area, so the officer just looked at it, and that was it. I mean, unfortunately, th that was the mistake that was taking place. Okay. So, what they are physically able to get on the um, appropriately paved surface under the county ordinance will not reach a quantity to allow them to have a cabaret license. That is correct. Just to be clear, does that clarify your answer, Mr. Rose? Yes. Supervisor? Corporation Council. Uh, I, I did check, and that still is in our rules with respect to finance budget changes. That specific language is that uh, uh, the recommendation from the committee must be to either adopt or reject. So if you come back with a negative recommendation, that's a situation where you are required to come back with a negative recommendation. I have no other lights. Any further discussion? If not, uh, I'll entertain a roll call vote on this uh, motion. If you support the committee's recommendation for denial, it is P and plus. If you oppose the committee's recommendation for denial, it's P and minus. Motion carries 25 to zero. The cabaret license is denied. Resolution 63 from Judiciary Law and Public Work Committee a resolution to ban firearms, explosive, and other weapons in Kenosha County buildings. Public Works Facility Committee, Alberman, yes, Grady, yes, O'Day, yes, Gail Gens, yes, Boyd Frederick, yes, Esposito, yes, Colmeyer, yes, Judiciary and Law, Michael, yes, Haas, yes, Johnson, yes, Singer, yes, Ron Frederick, yes, Serban, yes, Gerlach, yes. All right, before I move this, uh, there's an amended agenda in front of you. What was the original 63 in your packet was pulled from the agenda, so I believe in your packet this resolution is item number 64. Supervisor Elverman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would move resolution number 63. 63, moved by Supervisor Elverman, seconded by Supervisor Michael, Supervisor Elverman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As everyone has followed the uh, the news uh, we know that Wisconsin has enacted uh, what is called Act 35 uh, that will take place November 1st that allows concealed carry for the first time in the state of Wisconsin uh, the law does provide uh, certain property owners uh, and that includes uh, municipal property owners uh, of uh, lawfully preventing possession of concealed weapons in their buildings. And there are certain ways that you are allowed to do that. Uh, the main one is uh, posting of signs. What we're talking about here with policy resolution number 63 is Kenosha County doing just that in buildings that are owned, uh, operated, or leased. Uh, I guess the other word is controlled by Kenosha County. And that would uh, prevent firearms, explosive, dangerous weapons, or other objects of, uh, of, uh, that could cause bodily injury or harm. In uh, doing this, we are uh, including, as I said, buildings that are owned, operated, and uh, controlled by Kenosha County. This does not involve our park system because that is already um, under a, uh, a separate ordinance. And, uh, we have the uh, judges 
on board with this, the uh, Sheriff's Department. And uh, I understand that we do have an amendment coming forward uh, from the uh, circuit court judges that is uh, direct language from Act 35 uh, that they wanted included in our resolution this evening. So I would urge everyone's approval. Thank you. Thank you. On the issue, Supervisor Michael. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. At this time, I'm, I would make a, um, <clears throat> a motion to amend um, the resolution number 63. And um, what I'm asking to amend is in the fourth paragraph, after um, it would be line seven, where it says sworn government law enforcement officer, comma, and then I'm adding, or a person authorized to carry a weapon under section one, one, excuse me, 175.60 sub 16 sub B sub two comma Wisconsin statutes. And then I would add in line eight after um, Kenosha County executive period, I would add the sentence, any holder of a permit issued under subsection, or excuse me, under statute 175.60 sub 16 sub B sub two Wisconsin statutes by any judge of any county shall submit a copy of the permit to the clerk of court of Kenosha County for verification at least 24 hours prior to introducing any weapon into the Kenosha County Courthouse. What? Thank you. <laughs> Motion made by uh, Michael to amend, seconded by Supervisor Singer. I understand that uh, Corporation Council has worded, verbiage. No, you do not. Okay. I have it. If you want, and I, I can explain what, what we're actually adding. You can, and then I'm, I'm going to ask that it be read again. And if you want to uh, bring that copy up here so that the clerk's office can has it. Okay. Oh, you do have a copy. Okay, never mind. <laughs> okay. Ba basically, can I explain? Go ahead. On the amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, basically, what, what we're adding to the verbiage of this resolution is that circuit court judges can actually sign an order giving authorization to individuals to that have um, that have a permit the ability to go into a courthouse and um, that is what's under section 175.60 sub 16 sub b sub 2 so what we're requiring our our judges are asking is that anyone who has this order signed by a circuit court judge would have to submit it to the Kenosha County Clerk in, a, in 24 hours in advance so we could verify the order. And that's- S Circuit Court Clerk. Yeah, the, exactly, the Circuit Court could verify the order so that someone just doesn't walk into the courthouse with a, an order saying, I'm authorized to carry a gun. And, and an average citizen who has a permit would have this order so they can actually verify, they being the Clerk of Courts could verify that the person has authorization from a circuit court judge to enter a courthouse with a weapon. And of course, law enforcement can enter a courthouse with a weapon, but this is an average citizen with a carrying that has a permit. Sure. And this is what the judges, all eight of our circuit court judges have requested. Judge Schrader was at the Judiciary and Law um, Committee meeting and he requested that. Okay, thank you. Uh, one second. On the on the amendment, I want to read it one more time. Which, after the, uh, I do, I do. We're talking about the fourth paragraph. The sentence that states, "Except by a duly sworn government law enforcement officer, comma, we will add or a person authorized to carry a weapon under section 175.60 parent 16 parent B two Wisconsin statutes." That's the verbiage that will be added there. And then after the sentence that ends has been granted by the Kenosha County Executive, period, you'll insert this sentence. Any holder of a permit issued under section 175.60, parent 16, parent B2, Wisconsin statutes by any judge or any county, any judge of any county, 
shall submit a copy of the permit to the clerk of court of Kenosha County for verification at least 24 hours prior to introducing any weapon into the Kenosha County Courthouse. Those are the two changes. Supervisor Jeff Gens. Thank you. Through the chair to uh, Supervisor Michael, can you give me an example of this? I mean, what is, what are we talking here? Yes, Supervisor Michael. What happens is that an individual starting November 1st, you'll be able to get a permit to carry a concealed weapon. Once you have that permit, if you had contact with a judge from a different county, a circuit court judge, they can sign an order granting a, a citizen the ability to bring a firearm into a courthouse. It's a signed order from a circuit court judge, so it's, it's good throughout the state of Wisconsin. So what we're asking for is if an individual has that document, that they have to submit it to the clerk of courts in Kenosha with 24 hours before they're coming to our courthouse so we can verify it. Again, I, I guess I'm trying to look at this in layman's terms. A, a judge issues a It's an order from the court, and it could be Brown County. It could be from another district. Okay. Get, Who's going to get one of these and why? Just an average citizen? What do you, I, I, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to wrap my arms around You need to apologize side. to me. The governor well, has I'm granted the authority, if I can, the governor has granted the authority to circuit court judges. They can sign an order so anyone who has a permit to carry a concealed weapon who gets a signed order from any circuit court throughout the state of Wisconsin, they could enter any, any county courthouse. So Kenosha is creating this resolution so that if you're going to come to Kenosha with your order from a circuit court in Brown County, we're going to have, at least have the ability to verify that it is a an actual order of the court. Our, our was state, issued by one of our judges. Our state legislative bodies have included this language in the state law. Our judges are simply asking that we mirror it in our resolution or in our, in our ordinance. That's where it's come where it comes from. Correct. Correct. Anything else? Uh, no. <laughs> I, <laughs> I want one. Nice. Uh, Supervisor Decker. Who is a person authorized to carry a weapon, weapon under Wisconsin State Statute 175.60, parentheses 16? Anyone the B2. judge deems worthy. worthy. Supervisor Jeff Gentz believes he is worthy. <laughs> <laughs> what the However, the judges have not conferred that yet. But what is Wisconsin State Statute 175.60? Authority to a circuit court judge, the ability to sign an order for an individual to enter a courthouse. First and foremost, if I'm correct, the individual would need to qualify under the law to carry a concealed weapon. The next step under the statute you are citing, which you are adding as an amendment, would then be to petition a judge to be allowed to carry it into a courthouse. So the first step they have to, they have to get comply a with on their own, which is the concealed carry, if that's your question. Okay, because the way I understand the written, the way it's worded, it doesn't state that very clearly. Thank you. Supervisor Rose. Uh, let's, uh, going back to what Ms. Uh, Supervisor Michael has said here, now without this amendment, are, are we correct to understand, Supervisor, that uh, that person with the order and that person with the per uh, permit cannot enter the courthouse without this language, is that right? No, they could, they could enter, because under the act, they have a court order from a judge be I don't able. believe that's the question. No. If I'm correct, your question is if a citizen who has a concealed carry permit mm -hmm. does not have the court order as stated in this amendment, no, they are not allowed to enter the court. They will not, if we pass this ordinance, right. be allowed to enter the courthouse with a concealed weapon. So, but if they do have this court order from a judge in one of the counties in the state. And the concealed carry permit. And the permit and we have the ordinance without the amendment, can they enter? Yes. 
uh, if we have the ordinance without the amendment, they cannot enter simply with the permit. But Correct. can they enter with the order, though? They can, they can enter with the order. The only thing that this, this amendment does, it allows us to verify that it is an appropriate, that it's an accurate order. That's all it does. Because if they, they have a valid order, they're going to be able to come through no matter what. Does the Corporation Council agree with that interpretation? That's, that's my understanding. signs an order, person comes down here, he can enter the courthouse. Uh, all that this ordinance is doing, as I understand it, is adding one more hurdle for that person to uh, jump before they can pass through the courthouse doors with a concealed weapon. And that hurdle being that they have to uh, have that, that order verified. I think that's what's That's correct, there. and that's what the circuit court judges have requested. So we are simply saying that we will only recognize another county's granting to carry the gun in or a weapon into the courthouse if we are allowed to verify it, which is what that language will do. Correct. Within the 24 hours. Within 24 hours. I guess this comes as a bit of a surprise that someone could enter the courthouse with a gun, bypassing our security, show them the court order, show them the gun, they come in, they go into the divorce court highly in, um, emotional situation and, uh, pos and uh, possibly put somebody else's life in danger. And that was the, one of the reasons why we had the security at the door. We spent a lot of time and money and it works very effectively. And this is undermining it. Uh, I thought, and I guess I'm, we're wrong, that we could make a rule that said there are certain places you don't carry a gun. Uh, you don't carry a gun into the courthouse. You don't carry a gun into church. There are other places that you wouldn't want to see a gun brought in. And it doesn't interfere, I believe, with one's right to bear arms, which I, in general, support. But uh, I'm not going to uh, say, well, uh, because we have a right to have uh, matches and we have a right to uh, have oil, that we also have a right to combine the two to make a big fire and endanger a lot of people's lives. And that's the way I, I view this. I understand what you're saying that in Supervisor Michael, now that you've explained it a little better, this is actually somewhat of a check. But what it, what it also is, it's uh, a, an inflammatory situation uh, in, an, in a possibly an otherwise highly explosive uh, divorce court or any other courts where emotions run high, where considerable money is at stake. And uh, that's where the problem is going to arise. It's not going to arise in the criminal court. It's going to arise in those situations where there's a lot of money at stake and emotions are at stake. Uh, it's, uh, it's a bad state law that allows people to come into courthouses with permits or judges' orders from other states. And if that's the law, I guess we have little choice here except to uh, say to our legislatures, legislators, shame on you. Thank you, Supervisor Michael. Thank you. you um, need to clarify something? Just to clarify, it has to be a circuit court judge from the state of Wisconsin. And I would hope, like, like Mr. or Supervisor Rose has discussed, any attorney, anyone that's active in the courthouse realize emotions. And I would, I would hope that any judge in the state of Wisconsin would have common sense and not just sign anybody giving them an order to carry a gun in a courthouse. I mean, I would expect, and I think even the state legislators have some, <clears throat> excuse me, trust in our circuit court judges to have some common sense and regarding the order that it would only be in specific cases and for a specific reason. That it's not just political payback or anything like that where you have an individual with an order saying that I can carry a gun basically almost anywhere in the state of Wisconsin. But this is, I, I, I urge your support because this is just gives us another safeguard so that when our security confronts somebody with a weapon and they give them a document, at least we have the clerk's office verifying that it's an actual order 
and not some fabricated document that uh, somebody just drafted off to the, off, off to the, excuse me, off of the internet, that it can be verified and that the individual is the right person. Thank you. Thank you. Supervisor Grady. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, through the chair to Supervisor Michael, it appears as though what this amendment is trying to do is trying to put a check or balance for those outside uh, counties, if you want to term it that way, that someone visiting from them coming to Kenosha County would have a 24-hour basic, we would have a 24-hour heads up that this was in the works and being able to check if it's legitimate. Has it been brought to the attention, or I'll just ask you, say that the issuing judge was a Kenosha County judge, would there still be a 24-hour verification period? Yes, this applies to any any court order. It would have to be submitted and it would have to be verified. So regardless of which county issues it, Kenosha or other, there's still gonna be a period of due diligence or checking up on them, is that correct? Right. Yeah, the whole purpose is to make sure none of it's fabricated or, I mean, so it's actually verifi verifiable. I mean, that's, that's the name of the game. So that when this person enters the courthouse, we know that he, we're prepared that he's gonna be entering with a gun. So long story short, it applies to all Kenosha counties, Kenosha County inclusive, is that correct? Correct. That's my question, Mr. Chair, thank you. Thank you. Supervisor Holman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I have never owned nor operated a firearm, um, but I've heard a word verify tonight a number of times, and so I'm wondering if perhaps the chair of the committee can enlighten me as to how this process exactly goes about between when one gets a, a permit from the state, so to speak, how that, how does this whole thing work? From the information that we've received is an individual has to go through a background check, has to get class on, on the firearm. Um, that's the basic information we have. But regarding the order, that, that's something that a circuit court judge can sign off on an individual. I mean, and when I'm saying verified, we're, the clerk's office would verify that it is a accurate and uh, appropriate order from a circuit court judge granting it, the individual the authority to carry a firearm in a courthouse. And the clarification or, or confirming of that information through the clerk of courts is because that order will be within the court system. Correct. System. Right? Correct. Uh, Supervisor Elberman, do you have anything more you can uh, respond to with regard to Supervisor Holman's initial question about verifying the uh, right to carry the weapon in the first place? Well, yeah, that and then I, I could possibly add a couple other things. But the, the thing that we know for sure is that Act 35 takes place November 1st. The, in Act 35, is the wording that allows a municipal or a circuit court judge to allow a person to carry into a, a, a courthouse. So we know that is for sure also. We can't change that this evening. What our judges are asking is that they have a 24 hour notice. That's the only thing we can change this evening. That's what this resolution does. Uh, and and the, uh, the initial question is the state has laid out the requirements for the concealed carry. And at this point, uh, what they are is uh, uh, you have to be uh, an adult, uh, uh, I believe it's 21 years of age. You uh, have to pass background checks. And at this point, it's uh, four hours of uh, training uh, that you would have. Now, also included in this are many, many, many people that uh, have the right to carry concealed weapons. Uh, and you are going to have, again, many people that don't have to get this permission from circuit court judges that are going to be allowed. We have ex-police officers, we have ex-FBI agents, we have many people that, that can carry weapons in the state of Wisconsin right now without the concealed carry. They wouldn't be included in this. This is only people that would, uh, that would need the permission from a circuit court judge. And that's all our judges are asking this evening is that they have 24 hour, hour notice to verify. It's the only decision we're making tonight. Thank you. 
Supervisor Holm, on your other floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll just make one comment. Uh, this is uh, interesting and perhaps a little bit disturbing of a carve-out to have in the law. Thank you. Thank you. Super, uh, Vice Chairman Eckerts. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm a little confused here. We have now a concealed carry law in the state that uh, you, know, you can carry a gun in a concealed manner and you're not supposed to carry it. You're forbidden, forbidden from carrying it in courthouses, schools, and several other places provide, uh, without it being posted. And, and, and if uh, uh, a business or a municipality wants it, uh, they can post uh, other property. But now, I didn't know about this, we've got additional people that can be given permission to carry a gun at a courthouse. And like Supervisor Getz said, I'm, I'm, I'm confused. Who would that be? Are we going to arm the bailiffs? That's a rhetorical question. Uh, are we going to arm uh, the divorce attorneys? That's a rhetorical question, too. Uh, you know, who would the judges want to give the, the authority to carry a gun into the courthouse when we're trying to nail down security on the courthouse? So uh, this just sounds silly to me. Thank you. Thank you. Supervisor Noble. It surprises me that this Act 35 has been in the works for five months and tonight at the 11th and a half hour we have this many questions and why this wasn't uh, vetted out much earlier. Um, I'm actually quite surprised that, that you know, I, I guess I, I have another question. Is this, these orders that circuit judges can give, are they like blanket orders for the rest of a life to go into any courthouse in any state of, in any county in the state of Wisconsin? Are they like specific uh, uh, orders for a specific reason? You know, I mean, how, how do, and, and that's one question. And then does the judge have any personal liability if let's say, uh, you know, the person walking in behind him sees, you know, sees this guy coming in, has a gun, and he takes the gun away from him and shoots up the courthouse? Does that judge have a personal liability for issuing that, uh, <laughs> that blanket order, that order? I, I trust that's rhetorical as well, Supervisor. No, really, I'm serious. I mean, there should be some, I, I personal, know you are, there should be some personal responsibility here. Supervisor Judges Michael. have immunity, so exactly. their decisions, I mean, personally, they cannot be held liable for their, their orders. Right. So that's, I mean, it's the discretion of the judge. That's the state legislators have given the judge the discretion to grant this basically a privilege. Supervisor Michael, on the question of uh, in perpetuity, can you address that once it's granted by a circuit court judge? It depends on the order. I mean, I we haven't seen any of the orders. We haven't. I don't know if it's <clears throat> at this point. It, it, it's somewhat unique because from the statute, and I don't know if the corp council want to address that because the order, I have no idea. I think the judge could, if they wanted to, they could give it for 10 years. I mean, there's nothing that, from the information we received, that puts a, a limit on the actual judge's order that he could only grant it for X, you know, for a day or if it would be a month or, we don't have any of that information. So At least that, that wasn't brought to any of our committee. So, so judges could give, <coughs> They could give uh, orders to each other in the same courthouse. They could technically give it to the bailiff. I mean, there's no no restriction, no restriction, and no no responsibility. Individual would have to have the ability to get the actual permit to right. carry a concealed weapon. Once they have that permit, a judge could grant an order to their bailiff or their court reporter or anybody in their courtroom the authority to carry a gun in their in the courthouse well my concern would be that and again I guess it's if this is what our le legislators thinks is good law but my concern would be is if somebody comes in like somebody else has already said and he shows his permit and he shows his gun and walks in and then somebody else is following him in some divorce case or some heated case and this particular person who entered is maybe there for a wholly entirely different reason but now this person knows there's 
a gun available to him. All he has, to, you know, he's a you know big person, and the other person with the gun is a small person. He can easily take that gun away from him and use it for whatever purposes he wants. I, I don't think there should be guns in the courthouse. So. There's a lot of people that agree with you. The only, the unfortunate thing is we have no control over it. Our state legislators have created this law, and now we're stuck with it. I would have rather had this come up like five months ago and maybe our state legislators could have amended that law, but now we have to act by November 1st. Thank you, and I, I want to reiterate and be clear. If you take no action this evening, a concealed carry weapon can be brought into any county building and or facility. Just so we're clear. What's that? I'm saying it can be brought into any county facility. You're going to correct me and say, except the courthouse. Is that right? No, oh, we can. A, if, a, if we do not act. If you do not act, somebody could bring a gun into the courthouse concealed on their person uh, uh, with a court order. Without the 24 hour notification. Without the 24 hour notification. But then any other county facility I, is also, but we're not. There'd be no limitation at that point. I believe so. Supervisor Singer. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I just I just hope that the circuit court judges exercise ju judicial restraint uh, be because it's 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 a intent, it's not a good situation at all bringing guns in, into the courthouses. Anybody that just has a permit can, is not allowed to bring it in into the courthouse. They would have to get that judicial <coughs> permit. In addition to their regular permit, uh, one good thing about it is that, it, besides the verification uh, aspect of delaying them going in for 24 hours, you also have the ability to, for the sheriff's department or the or the courts, to put security in that courtroom if they so desire to do that, so they have time to react, as as the chairman said. So I do agree with with uh, the concerns of all the other supervisors about this, but we do need to pass this. I think it's a tightening up of the law that we need to do for Kenosha County, so I'd like to see this passed tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Singer. Supervisor Rose. Um, I'm going to support the amendment. I think it's necessary, but I also would urge uh, Supervisor Michael, as chair of the Judiciary and Law Enforcement Committee, to uh, convene and set some rules and guidelines to define what verify means. Uh, I think you should have a certified copy of a court order, not just a copy. I think it needs to be certified. I think that's a rule that you could adopt. I think you should uh, have a rule which notifies the Sheriff's Department so that uh, if additional security is necessary for the courthouse, that would be an option. I'm sure there are other ways that, uh, that this word can be defined. <coughs> and it can be done within a 24-hour period. I think you'd be doing a public service as Judiciary and Law Enforcement Committee to define and uh, tighten up and set some regulations or administrative rules as to what uh, this verification process means so that people are safe in a courthouse where emotions run very, very high. I'm in the courthouse every day on uh, anywhere from three to five, six cases. I know how high emotions can uh, run in that courthouse. Most of us probably don't get into that courthouse very often, but uh, this can be a highly volatile situation and uh, people need to be protected. Thank you. Supervisor Decker. Uh, to clear, can, can you repeat the second part of the amendment? Second part of the amendment again will be a sentence inserted after the sentence that ends written permission has been granted by the Kenosha County Executive, period. The sentence that will be added states, any holder of a permit issued under 175.60 parent 16 parent B2, Wisconsin statutes by any judge of any county shall submit a copy of the permit to the clerk of Court of Kenosha County for verification at least 24 hours prior to introducing any weapon into the Kenosha County Courthouse. Thank you. And I am. So if you want to bring it in on Tuesday, it needs to be there on Monday. That the request 
for verification and copy of the permit need to be there on Monday. And I'm reading from Wisconsin State Statutes um, 175.60, subsection 16A says that neither the prohibited activity is neither a licensee or an out of state licensee may knowingly carry a concealed weapon, a weapon that is not concealed, or a firearm that is not a weapon in any of the following places. A portion of a building that is a police station, sheriff's office, state patrol station, or the office of a division of criminal investigation, special agent of the department, any portion of a building that is a prison, jail, house of correction, or secured correctional facility, um, any secured unit or secured portion of a mental health institute, any portion of a building that is a county, state, or federal courthouse. So no one is allowed right now under the new concealed carry law to carry a weapon, concealed or not concealed, in any of those places, except I, the people that are noted in here. I believe you read um, 175.16 A? Yes. It, you scroll down to 16 B2? And 16 B2 well states unless they're approved by the, right here. B2 is a weapon in a courthouse or courtroom if a judge who is a licensee is carrying the weapon or if another licensee or out of state licensee whom a judge has permitted in writing to carry a weapon is carrying the weapon. So that's an exception to the rule. Thank you. Again, for clarification, you're not suggesting that the amendments are not accurate then? I am not suggesting that. My they do in fact other people were stating it sounded like they were under the assumption that people in general general were allowed to carry weapons in the courthouse. No, no, no. Which no. is in that and if is I incorrect. Led you to believe that that was not my intention. Anything else? No. Thank you. Supervisor Hallman. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> I apologize. I have one more question about this. Um, it says policy resolution at the top. Um, I don't know whether it's to the chair of the committee or to Corporation Council, but provided we pass this with the amendment that has been suggested, uh, do, do we have latitude to come in and, and issue some sort of fine if, if it's violated? I mean, how, how exactly does that work for us? I, without having the law in front of me, I, it would be my opinion that um, the state legislature has acted on this as a matter of statewide concern. They want uniformity throughout the state and barring any fine or penalty or other enforcement action that was authorized by the state statute that there is nothing that the uh, county or any other municipality can do to uh, address it other than what's allowed for in statute itself. So the statement is state, state law governs in terms of any arrest, penalty, fine, etc. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Supervisor Zerb, Zerb uh, no? Noble. Okay, now I have a question regarding the sentence. What is the sentence unless specific written permission has been granted by the county executive? What is that referring to? So does the county executive also have the ability to give people written permission to carry concealed weapons in any building? Chairman, either or. Which one? Uh, well, if you read this. Uh, uh, I'm just asking the question, you know, it says, uh, except by a duly sworn government law enforcement officer. So you have to be a sworn government law enforcement officer to carry. But then it has this odd sentence, unless specific written permission has been granted by this, by the Kenosha County Executive. What is it? What does that mean? That means that the county executive can give permission. Give permission for someone to carry a concealed weapon into any building? Not into a courthouse because it's not allowed. But any other building? Correct. Not sure why we would want to have that either. That's the act. That, okay, 
I'm, I'm hearing a comment that I want to make sure. You're saying that's in state law? I believe that's part of the act. Frank, correct me if I'm wrong. Well, given Supervisor Noble's question, I'd like to make sure we answer that definitively. I, I don't have the law. We don't, we don't know if that's a carve out for Kenosha County here. I guess we, we couldn't, could we? Right. Th this was presented to us by the, uh, nationally by uh, Bernie Bash from the Corporation Counsel's Office. I doubt, uh, I mean, I couldn't verify this, but I doubt that he uh, just threw in the county executive phrase there. Uh, I'm sure that it is for counties with the county executive, uh, and there might be different raising for counties that don't have a county executive. It would probably say permission by the county board, written permission by the county board, but this was something that I, I know that they investigated, and this was in every um, copy of this that I've seen. Well, we'll give Supervisor Decker a moment to scan the, uh, <laughs> scan the law. Take your time. Supervisor Noble, anything else? Well, unless that's in the law, I want to strike it. I want to make amendment to strike it, but I will, uh, you know, like I said, I mean, here we are, 11th hour, and we don't know if that's in the law or not in the law. I'll make them, I'll ma I would like to make an amendment and to strike it. Just right. we can always have, have an amendment. We can always have it come back at yeah, another we time. Can't we can't amend an amendment. Well, then after, the the, then after the amendments on the floor, I'll I, I I'd will like recognize to have you at the that floor point. back. Thank you. Supervisor Hallman looks excited over there. Yeah, I, just, I know the administrative rules on this are fairly new, so if we could just have like a recess to just sort of look at this for a bit. I that, thought that you were be, excited because you had it already. So. I'm, I'm getting it. Give me two minutes and I'll be there. All right, quit talking to me and look. <laughs> Supervisor Haas. I've been researching this. November 1st are not even going to be ready. The Justice Department is the one that has to issue the permits, and they're thinking they don't even have the paperwork ready to do it. I don't think there's going to be any permits issued for probably till December. You know, they're not even ready for this, what I've been told up there. So, I don't know if we need to act on this tonight. We get better clarification on it. Uh, we could probably act on it November 8th, get more information. Uh, maybe corporate counsel could get something from Madison on that too. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. I have no other lights on the board. I'm going to ask a, a couple of questions. Um, I think before we get to the the resolution as amended. <clears throat> First of all, the question of verification. There's been a number of statements made about ver verification. <laughs> Uh, I understand verifying the uh, 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 order from a judge. What, uh, what's the process for verifying? I heard there's some concerns about a forged or a 24-hour notice, or I'm sorry, a notice from a judge being made up on the computer. Well, how do we verify that, in fact, the concealed carry permit hasn't been fabricated? Is there, did, did we talk about policy or uh, procedure for verifying the actual concealed carry permit. I trust you have to show that every time you go in somewhere. If it's, I'll trust not. We don't know the answer to that. <laughs> <laughs> Supervisor Overman, Mr. Chairman, I think anyone that has a concealed carry permit um, would uh, would normally carry it with them. Uh, possibly the best person to ask would be Vice Chairman Eckernitz on how that's handled. I'm sure that he has one. Well, uh, it's my understanding uh, of the way the law works from having been part of it for so long. If a person is found to have a concealed weapon, he's going to have to produce the permit to show that he's got a right to be carrying that concealed weapon. Uh, I've got that right right now under H.R. 218, which supersedes any county ordinances or state laws that I, I can carry regardless any place I want, as can all retired law enforcement officers and 
that have had at least 15 years of honorable service, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, I would expect it's going to be created as a somewhat tamper-proof, as tamper-proof as you can call it, uh, uh, permit. The uh, su Supervisor Haas, I think, is right. The uh, AG's office is way behind in getting prepared for this thing. And uh, I would expect that it's going to be some time before they are in, in gear to uh, start issuing permits. And I also uh, think that this resolution here, well, I, I guess I will vote for it, but I think it's a feel-good amendment because I know that this really doesn't accomplish anything except make people feel good about doing something. Because we know anybody with a mission isn't going to be stopped by a sign hanging on the door. And that's the person you have to worry about is the person on the mission, not the person that's going about his normal business and their everyday business and might be carrying a concealed weapon because he chooses to. So, uh, but uh, it is the law in the state now, as it is in 49 states now. And uh, uh, we're going to have to uh, accept that and, and work with it. Thank you. Thank you. The other question I had on this 24 or notice, uh, someone mentioned something about a challenge. Uh, on the issue of a challenge, someone brought up challenging, and I don't know if it was in reference to this 24 hour notification, et cetera, but is there any risk, another corporation council is back. Are we aware of any risk in adding this 24-hour requirement that we are somehow going to be in, uh, in opposition to the state statute? I, um, I don't know of any. Um, and I would think that a court on its own could issue an order to that effect um, uh, for the purpose of securing the courthouse or individual courtrooms within the courthouse. Um, so I, 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 my answer would be no. Okay. And then it was also mentioned the concern about an individual who has the approval from a circuit court judge to bring a weapon into the courthouse and are concerned that this individual can bypass security with a weapon, yet again I go back to and I asked uh, I believe both of the chairman of the committees to look at the fact that we currently have all kinds of people bypassing our security. And I was hopeful that that would be addressed as part of this discussion. Uh, any movement on tightening up security in general. Any, any Either one of you want to comment on that? Just briefly, Mr. Chairman, um, I did speak briefly with Bob Riedel. He is basically the, um, the czar of the, the courthouse security. Um, basically, the sheriff has, the county exec has placed that burden on uh, Mr. Riedel, and uh, we have not, we haven't put that on the agenda yet, but I plan on putting it on the, ju the judiciary and laws agenda to discuss and uh, to talk about uh, their policy. Okay. I, I hope you do, and as a facilities issue, I'd like you to engage the uh, planning, uh, highway and parks and facilities committee as well, please. I, again, if you're going to make the point of how dangerous a situation, how volatile a situation can be, and then you're going to add to that the ability to bypass security. Stand, stand in the hallway. They bypass security with not much more than a pretty simple pass to do so every day, all day. Yes, sir. And also, though, with these permits, or it's basically, I mean, basically what happens, and if I can address your concern, is the attorneys, the defense bar basically has a card with their picture on it that allows them to go through the security and to be honest with you the judges have basically been in agreement so it's not just I'm fully aware of all of that so I mean to some degree it's almost as basically what's going on in our state legislature 
by giving judges the authority to allow people to, you know, circumvent the the um, security. Great and work. A lot of it has to do the. Uh, Great a phrase. lot of it has to do with the, you know, the judges are concerned. They yes. want attorneys to be on time, and sometimes there is a backlog. And the best way to do that is circumvent security. Remember that phrase. Um, Corporation counsel just mentioned to me uh, that uh, we can strike the reference to the county executive. I'll let you state it so that I don't uh, have it incorrectly. I talked with Mr. Vosh and asked him for the uh, rationale for that in the background, and he indicated that that could come out. It was put in there for certain types of uh, circumstances on uh, county land, say for example at a park if they had a uh, uh, like the Civil War reenactment uh, you know, um, I forget what they call them but uh, those types of things or um, a um, uh, target shooting or something like that on county land. So just for clarification if we take this, oh we can take it out, you're saying, because the parks are excluded from this uh, resolution, is that right? We I cannot prevent carrying of a concealed weapon in a park, is that correct? I, uh, I'm, I'm only relaying what, uh, yeah. what uh, I believe Mr. that's Fox. the case. I don't believe state statute allows us to, to um, carve out county parks. So I trust that's where that comes from. And then finally, in response to Supervisor Noble, the 11th hour, why this is coming so late. Uh, of course, state was still working on the uh, uh, change in state statute. The judges got it at the same time we did. The schedules didn't mesh. They contacted myself as well as the chairman of the two committees, indicating that their security committee, meaning the judges' security committee, the courthouse is going to meet and get us something as expeditiously as they could. And this is where we're at. Supervisor Haas. Also, thank Still you, on Mr. the Chairman. amendment, please, if we, the, uh, if we, you know, if we can. The permits, you'll have to have a photo ID when you get the permit. That's another thing the Justice Department is uh, putting into effect. And also, we're kind of, I think, in law enforcement, from a law enforcement perspective, a nut's going to get a gun in the courthouse anyway. What the judges are trying to do with this is just to make sure he knows who's got one in there. Okay, if somebody wants to sneak a gun in the courthouse anyway, they can do it. It's quite simple, you know. It's just a tool that the judges are trying to, you know, say, hey, this is who's got a gun. Thank you. Thank you. Supervisor Zerbant. I'll call the question. Uh, motion to call the question uh, by Supervisor Zerbant, seconded by Supervisor Rose. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? question is closed. Uh, what is before you is policy resolution 63 as amended. Do I need to read the amendments again or are we clear? Yes. Before you is the amendment. Do I need to read the amendments again or are we clear? Yeah, then you'll have to wait for this one to be disposed of. I was closing the question. All right, roll call requested on the amendment, which is two sentences referencing uh, section 175, 60, parent 16, parent B2. In favor of the amendment, P and plus. If you're opposed, P and minus. Motion carries 25 to 0. Resolution 63 before us as amended is now open for discussion. Supervisor Noble. And uh, after the Corporation Council is conferred with Bernie Vash, uh, I would like to strike that sentence unless specific written permission has been granted by the Kenosha County Executive. Motion by Noble to strike the words unless specific written permission has been granted by the Kenosha County Executive. Is there a second? Is there a second? Motion made by Noble, seconded by Supervisor Decker. On the amendment, Supervisor Noble, anything else? Uh, no, as well. As, yes, as you heard, Supervisor uh, uh, Corporation Counsel said that he spoke to Mr. Bash on the phone, and he the only reason.
reason he added that in there was for uh, Civil War reenactments and things like that in the parks. And you know, we're talking about buildings here. I don't think we need somebody else giving anybody giving more permission than necessary, other than sworn law enforcement officers. All right, thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Rose. Move the previous question. I'll move all previous questions. I, I would amend that, all previous questions. Motion made to move all previous questions, seconded by Supervisor Zerban. On the issue of uh, moving the previous question, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. All right, before you is the amendment proposed by Supervisor Noble, seconded by Supervisor Decker to strike the words, unless specific written permission has been granted by the Kenosha County Executive. Roll call is requested. If you're in favor of the amendment, P and plus. If you're opposed, P and minus. The amendment carries 16 to 9. Before you now is the resolution as amended, which includes two references to 17560.16b2, as well as the striking of the reference to the authorization by the county executive. Any clarification needed on the resolution as amended? Roll call is requested. P and plus, resolution 63 as amended, minus if you're opposed. Motion carries 24 to 1. Communications from Georgie Melcher regarding future items scheduled before the Planning, Development, and Extension Education Committee. Refer to Planning, Development, and Extension Education Committee, and I'm going to back up at this point to County Executive Appointments 13 and 14. I misread that, and I'm, I was thinking uh, Board of Appeals. Uh, both of those should also have been referred to, I believe, the Human Services Committee. So my apologies for that. I will refer 12, 13, and 14, all the Human Services Committee. Claims 14, Joan M. Platt, vehicle damage. Refer to Corporation Council. 15, Jamison Hylinski injured while golfing. Refer to Corporation Council. Closed session pursuant to Section 19.851G, consultation with attorney regarding litigation in which it is or is likely to become involved, claim of the City of Kenosha regarding the Health Department. Is there a motion to go into closed session? Supervisor O'Day, moved by Supervisor O'Day, seconded by, is there a second? Seconded by Supervisor Boyd Frederick. All those in favor of going into closed session signify by saying, uh, roll call, I'm sorry. Roll we'll call on that. Uh, if you're in favor, close session, P and plus. If you're opposed, P and minus. Motion carries 24 to 0. I will give a minute or two to clear the room. to removing the county executive's uh, authority to um, grant a what do you no, want? It was yes. I want to change, my, change it from a yes to a no. Any objection? Seeing none, the clerk will note that in the record. Approval of the October 4th, 2011 by Supervisor O'Day. Minutes by Supervisor O'Day. Supervisor O'Day. So moved. Minutes of the October 4th meeting moved by Super Ro Supervisor O'Day, seconded by Supervisor Bruning. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed. Motion adjourned by Supervisor Alverman, seconded by Supervisor Michael. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, we are adjourned. Thank you.